if I asked you to pick up the first item on your typical shopping list from a local supermarket without vision? Indulge me for one minute. Please close your eyes. Picture yourself standing outside your favorite grocery store. Maybe you pulled up in your car or jumped off the local bus or hopped out of a subway station. You could feel the sun beating down on your face and hear the hustle and bustle of the post-work pre-dinner rush. What specific direction would you head in to target the doorway? How many steps are required to reach the front entrance? Where are the ramps and curbs in relationship to your planned path? What are the exact locations of those storefront pillars relative to you? Let's assume you're in the doorway. Where are the shopping carts or baskets given your current position? How many steps would you now take to reach the first or most conveniently located one? Where is the handle of that cart or basket? What additional moving objects do you have to be most mindful of? Other shoppers, children, dogs? This sounds exhausting, doesn't it? You can open your eyes. For the 300 million who are visually impaired worldwide, this seemingly simple task is a complex journey fraught with challenges. And the anxiety you may have experienced by attempting to answer these questions doesn't come close to capturing how truly taxing and painful it is to navigate through everyday tasks. Most of us take for granted the ability of our, spati of our visual system to spatially analyze the environment and the use of this information for seamless navigation. For the last 30 years of my life, I have watched my vision at the outermost extent in the periphery fade from clear to blurry and eventually to nothing, shrinking to a small tunnel right in the very center. I have a rare disease called choroideremia that has been robbing me of my sight since I was a child. Here's an inside view of a healthy retina and a side-by-side -side view of mine. Presently, I'm legally blind and setbacks such as worsening vision, medical complications, and professional obstacles have been the norm. But the truth is, I'm also incredibly fortunate. I have an amazing wife who is the ultimate partner in aid. She helps guide me places. As a matter of fact, in dim light, when I'm at my worst, we have our own hand-holding squeeze codes to signal ramps, curbs, stairs, obstacles, and occasionally even the irresistible pastry. Strong squeezes, light squeezes, sequence squeezes, squeezes in doublets, in triplets, there is an art to it. I have a strong family and very supportive colleagues and friends who are always willing to lend me their shoulder, arm, forearm, or hand, guiding me like a train caboose through crowded city streets, through Codford's venues with never-ending hallways, or between meeting locations. To be blunt, I would not be here today if I had not been able to hitch rides. But it has not and is not always like this. I have been left out, straight at the danger, and wished certain periods of my life away. My visual disability has brought me pain, but it has brought me tenacity, insight, and opportunity. These gains have incrementally advanced every misstep, every stumble, and every collision. To be frank, I wish I could reverse my blindness and extend those improvements to those with vision loss across the spectrum. Presently, this is not an option. So how do we move forward? Well, every time I become increasingly frustrated with a situation, it's a deep breath, a reboot, and an exercise in reframing. It's now a challenge. How do we fix it and solve or change the status quo to avoid these vexing circumstances? I then re-trigger a realization. If I'm affected by this inaccessible environment, there are others, and, and solutions are needed to solve the problems. One in five adults lives with a disability in the US. Between the ages of 65 and 75, that number jumps to one in four. Over 75, one, and two, if disabled, the unemployment rate approaches 70%. Household income drops by 40%. And the poverty rate shoots up by two and a half fold. We are three times more likely to have heart disease, stroke, diabetes, and cancer. It all sounds pessimistic. But let me tell you the upside of living in 2018. We are now in the fourth industrial revolution, the age of intelligent machines. And technology is leaping forward at immeasurable speeds. You see, I see a different future for us. One where we level the playing fields and destroy previously established ceilings, creating digital power tools that can fill gaps for those in need with disabilities. Tools that not only achieve baseline functional status, 
but that surpass it with new super abilities. Now, I know what many of you are thinking. Is this guy reading too many comic books? I'd like to bring us back to my story for a second. While channeling the frustrations of these missteps, stumbles, and collisions, and redirecting the emotion into fuel for finding solutions, I became hell-bent on studying the visual system. I was fascinated by how I could leverage my intact vision to cover my shrinking peripheral field, and I was absorbed by how individuals with compromised vision could maintain reasonable function and compensate strategically. While I learned a tremendous amount, there were still gaps. As I continued to lose my sight, I became increasingly aware of increasingly complex navigation challenges. My progressive condition had given me a first row seat to this special feature. Even as I became better equipped with compensation strategies, there were dangers lurking everywhere. On a simple trip to a frequented store, with mental maps and planning, I could trip on a curb that was higher than the others. I could run into a wall that was painted with muted colors at dusk, or I could collide with the open trunk of a car. So I kept thinking how we could fill gaps with digital tools to help those in need and maximize safety and efficiency during navigation. The key, harnessing the innovation developed for driverless cars and applying it for use during visionless pedestrians. If we could cover a car's blind spots, or all spots for that matter, with automated, with automated technology, why couldn't we cover a person's? So we set out to build advanced wearables that could cover a visually impaired person's blind spots and analyze and react in all environments. Watching a visually impaired person's blind spots, however large or severe they were. Imagine recreating my wife and her hand codes virtually and retrofitting her into a wearable. She wouldn't be too happy or comfortable, but in all seriousness, envision a device that mapped your external space and that created a supersensory protective halo, a spherical shield or a bubble of security, a device that didn't fatigue, was resistant from aging and that freed us from the dependencies of additional animate or handheld assistance. A device that fed you distilled spatial information through logical prompts and cues using selective touch and audio output, and that could be deployed in something as universal as a book bag. Think of the same sensors that line the bumpers of your car fitted along the shoulder straps of a backpack, along with a set of small vibrating motors similar to what you'd find in your cell phone for silent alerts along the waist strap, all coordinated by a cell phone and a headset, giving you blind spot monitoring in any location and at any time. We can have a digital power tool that constantly watches the world around you. The potential is for 360 degrees of full protection. And so when I was talking about super abilities, I was not kidding. Imagine a device that could see more and see farther, that could communicate with advanced mapping platforms through GPS, that could auto blueprint building structures, that could be networked with cars, buses, buses, traffic control stations, and that could be socially and emotionally conscious. Well, enough imagining. Where does this leave us present, presently? How about joining me on a guided visualization? Now to start, I would like you to harness the anxiety from the earlier exercise without vision and jump back into the first scenario. Only this time, I'm going to re-enable you with a wearable that maps your environment in real time. I'm going to help this process by granting you a first-person view of the active scene from one of the cameras on the book bag. OK, go simulation. Our system detects and interprets environmental features that may not be presented to the user, but are critical to providing the safest path forward. We use facial recognition to provide social alerting. Deb C from HR department ahead. Expanding this capability will allow for richer interpersonal interactions and foster true independence. Locate front entrance. Front entrance located. 11 o'clock. 17 steps. Veer correction. Step left. Barrier post directly ahead. Front entrance seven steps to your one o'clock. Target in five steps. Four, three, two, one. Front entrance reached. Now in store foyer. Engage point to tell. Point to tell engaged. Motorized cart. Soda boxes. Door. Table. Shopping carts. 
Shopping cart selected. Target mode. Target in five steps. Four, three, two, one. Wait to proceed. Customers exiting. Wait to proceed. Proceed. Engaging indoor map. Low shopping list. And you are off. What if I told you we are close to bringing many of these feature sets into reality for our wearable? It sounds futuristic, but we have completed the majority of this work in our research laboratories. In closing, I would like to share a few thoughts. Disability is a common denominator for the human race. Tearing the D, the I, and the S off of disability and focusing on ability is evolution. With new tools, we make the inaccessible accessible, we make the excluded included, and we ensure inequalities reverse into equalities. We are now able to unlock the true superhero and those with disabilities at unprecedented sp speeds and with some damn cool superpowers at that. I challenge us all to evolve, channel your frustrations into gains, make shape, invent, and rewrite. Jump hurdles, tear down barriers, and blast through walls. Many thanks to you all.